We ended our last tutorial with the creation of a basic image-based lighting solution in Arnold. In this tutorial we will look at adding dynamic end particles and the creation of selection sets to emit the end particles from specific places of the dancer geometry. Now that we have a basic environment set up for Arnold, let's create the particles for the voxel dancer. So I'm just going to close my render settings and my Arnold render view. Close down my node editor. To do this, we first need to create a new mesh network, which will generate my end particles from a simple polygon. In the polygon shelf, create a new polygon plane. And in the pplane one objects channel box, in the inputs under polyplane one, let's change Change the subdivisions height to 1 and 1. Just going to switch my view to perspective and F to zoom in. There we go. And I'm going to rename this P plane 1 to P plane 1 part generator. With P plane 1 part generator selected in the outliner, in the Mash tab, let's create a new mesh network and let's rename this mesh to particle generator. The reason that we're using mesh to generate the particles is that it allows me to place my particle emitters on the dancer as and where I want them and the adaptability of MASH means that it's something that's live that we can use all the way through the project. Let's select the MASH2 distribute particle generator and change the distribution type to mesh. Scroll down to the mesh, make sure it's set to scatter, which it is. And in our input mesh, let's minimize mouse button our dance, dance one skin model across. And if we zoom out, we can see these planes at various points throughout the mesh. There we go. Everything's synced up now. So I'm just going to increase the number of points to 20. And when we press play, go back to our camera one view. I'll just put this into wireframe view so that we can hopefully have things running at a decent speed. We can see our plane objects moving with our other elements. So now let's switch to the effects menu and we can add some particles to our mash particle generator. Let's select the mash to particle generator repro mesh and in our end particles menu, go to emit from object and let's select the options. Make sure our emitter type is set to surface. Press create. And now if we press play, we can now see particles streaming from the polygons created by the mash to particle generator. And the great thing about using mash in this case is that we can increase or decrease the amount of emitting polygons just by raising or lowering the number of points in the MASH2 particle generator distribute node. The emitter1 object, which controls the amount of particles, is visible in the outliner as a child of the MASH2 particle generator repro mesh object. And let's just make sure that its rate is set to 500 particles per second. Ideally, we want the particles to be smaller cubes to make them look like they are coming from the voxelized dancer, and also for them to interact with the floor and dancer using dynamics. We can easily create the particles interaction with the ground plane by selecting the Nucleus 1 object and select Use Plane. And now if we press Play, we can see the particles now just interact with the ground and we're left with a trail of particles there. It is worth noting that when we use the ground plane in our Nucleus 1 object, that's referring to the entire Maya scene. Even if we had our studio object switched off, the particles would still interact with the ground plane. To improve playback speed while we add dynamic systems, select our MASH1 voxel repro node. So that's the button there, and that takes us to our repro. And 
switch our level of detail to bending box and hopefully yep that has improved performance a bit but as we are using screen capture software it is a bit slower but yet yeah, that definitely has improved things to make the dancer a dynamic object itself select the hidden dance dance one skin object and in the menu option end cloth create passive collider that will add dynamics to the dancer which interact with the particles this creates an n rigid one object which we can see here which we can use to adjust the dynamic properties of the dancer but for now the standard settings are fine so if we press play yep we can see that the dancer is now interacting with these particles and pushing them forward and around we need to use the end particles instancer tool to add our cube geometry so let's select the p cube one for voxels and then pressing command click on the end particle one object then choose the end particles menu and in the instancer object select the options and we'll give our particle instancer a name of voxel cube and press create and in our outliner we can now see a new object called voxel cube but one and if we press play yep we can see cubes now interacting with the ground and the dancer the cubes are now coming from the figure but it all does feel a bit messy the cubes ideally should come from behind the figure to do this we need to create a selection set of polygons from the original dance one dance one underscore skin object So what is a selection set? A selection set is a set of parameters which can define a element on a object that you wish to keep reselecting. So for this example, I'm going to use a sphere and I'm going to create various selection sets on it. So let me just move into face mode, right click, and I'm going to press shift, shift that loop, and I'm going to go create, sets, set, and just make sure that's called set one apply and close and now select another loop do the same set and just rename that set two apply and close now this means if i was to go off and shift clicking various other elements but i want to go back to elements that i've already selected i can go to my selection set here and select set members could do the same with this one and select set members so it's a really useful way of selecting specific elements on a model that you may want to refer to may want to use later uh, for example we could do set one select set elements and bevel set two and select set members and extrude so there are lots of various parameters that we can use them for Another type of selection set is a quick selection set. So if I was to create a loop of those elements, I can go create sets quick selection set and call this loop. And the great thing about this is if I press add to shelf, I can have it here, select, and obviously I can have as many of these as I want. So let's stop and go back to the beginning of our animation and let's show our dance one dance skin object using shift h and we're going to switch into smooth shade all and i'm going to switch into perspective view press f to zoom in i've got a lot going on here so i am going to hide my voxels by control h and also our little plane objects Control H. So now selecting the dance one, dance skin object, I'm going to drop into, oh, drop into face mode. There we go. Right click. And I'm just going to select 10 or so polygons on each side of the dancer where I want 
particles to come from using shift click. If you don't like any of your selections, such as this little one here, if you press control, you can deselect and I think I'll put another one there and here as well. I might just get rid of that one, get rid of that one, put another one, say here. Okay, that's great. Now I can create a selection set of these polygons using the menu option. Create, sets, set, and let's just select the option and create a new selection set called Dancer Polygons. And I'm going to press apply and close. And we can see in the outliner a new polygon item has appeared. I'm just going to Rename that. Correct my spelling. Switch back into object mode. Let's hide our dance one object again and show our voxels and our repro mesh. And that was Control H to hide our dancer and Shift H to reveal our two repro meshes. So if we go to our Mash2 Particle Generator Distribute node, in the mesh options, there we go. We can now middle mouse button our dancer polygons selection into our selection set. Yeah. We can see that the polygons have moved to the correct points defined by the our selection set. Okay, so if we just switch back to our camera one, let's play that. Switch into wireframe view so we can see what's going on a bit better. Using the number four key. Okay, some of the cubes are still emitting too close to the dancer, which is not what I want, as I want the cubes to look like they are flowing from just behind the dancer. If we choose the push along normal, we can see, if we switch back into perspective view, that this is pushed our plane objects away from our dancer and this is the point of where the emitters will be emitting from which is great so that the particles look like they're emanating just from slightly behind our voxelized dancer okay so we are done with our planes repro mesh so we're just going to hide that using control h and now go back to our camera view Yeah, that's much better. So the particles are now emitting from behind our dancer and they look much more like they're streaming, but all the dynamics are still applying. The particles are dropping to the ground and also our voxelized dancer is hitting the particles as and when he gets to them rather than them just occurring all around him. To make sure that our cubes aren't actually spilling out into the studio object as well, select the studio mesh as we have done in the outliner and let's make it a passive object by switching to the effects menu again and going to our end cloth, create passive collider. So if there are any issues now, yeah, we can see that's added a little bit more dynamic interaction with our studio scene. 